Hi, in this one we're going to talk about the project folder. So a Hi's project isn't just a single file, it's a complete folder containing subfolders and files. And in this video we're going to discuss all the common files and folders that you'll find in your project. So to start with we have the additional source code folder. And mine is empty, and it usually will be empty. It's used when you're working with the C++ side of Highs, and Highs will also use it for auto-generated files when we're compiling DSP networks. Next we have the Audio Files folder. This is mainly used for impulse responses, and as you can see I have some impulse response files in here that I'm using in Bell & Bone. You can also use this folder for other files that you're using internally within your project, but it's not for samples, they go in a different folder. Next we have the binaries folder. This folder contains files generated by Highs when we export our projects. So it also includes the actual plugin files. So if we go to the builds folder, and I'm on Linux, so I go to the Linux makefile folder, but if you're on macOS, it would be the Mac OS X one, and if you're on Windows, the Visual Studio folder. And if I go to the build folder, we can see the VST3 plugin that I've exported from my highest project. The documentation folder is just a place for you to put any documentation relating to your project. So you could put a user manual in here for example, and Highs also has a built-in documentation system that you can use, and if you choose to use that you would put those files in here. The DSP networks folder is used for storing files related to script node networks. Script Node is Heise's node-based DSP system, and we'll be looking at that later in the series. But the files related to DSP networks, they go in here. And you can also bring external code into this folder if you're working with third-party DSP libraries. Next we have the Expansions folder. Heise includes an expansion system that lets you offer users additional content for your plugins, such as samples, presets, and images. These files are organized within the expansions folder, and your project needs to be designed to support expansions from the very beginning in order to use this system. The images folder is for storing image files that can be used on your interface, things like background images, film strips for knobs, buttons, and sliders. You can also store fonts in here that you want to use on your UI, and I usually put them in a subfolder called fonts, but you don't have to. Highs includes a MIDI player module, and if you want to play MIDI files into it, you can store them in this MIDI files folder. When we import assets into Highs, such as images and audio files, Highs will bundle them together into data files that it uses internally, and in some cases you'll need to include these data files with your plugin when distributing it to users. And this folder, the pooled resources folder, is where those files are stored. There are two file formats we use for saving our projects when we're working in Highs. And the first is called a highs preset, not to be confused with a user preset, which we'll come to in a moment. A highs preset has a .hip extension, and it stores the structure of our project, so the module tree and the state of the GUI. And highs periodically autosaves as well, and those autosave files are also stored in the .hip format, and you can see them here. Now the .hip format isn't human readable, meaning we can't open it in a text editor to make changes. Because of this, it's not used as the main project file. Instead, it's primarily used for creating test patches that allow us to experiment and try out ideas before transferring them into our main project. So you can see I have a bell and bone.hip, so that is my main project file, but I wouldn't depend on this file because if it became corrupted, there's nothing I can do to fix it because I can't open it in a text editor to solve the problem. But mostly I use the HIP for creating little test projects. So you can see I have one here called MIDI Learn Test. I have one here called RT test, I have one for sample mapping, table save test. So I have a lot of these little test patches when I'm just trying things out and I'm just experimenting, and I often make one specifically for sample mapping, because sometimes you just want to work in an isolated project while you're figuring out how you're going to map your samples. Okay, let's have a look at the sample maps folder. So one of the great features of Heise's sampler module is that the sample mapping data isn't embedded within the sampler itself. Instead, it's stored in separate sample map files, like the ones we see in this folder. Since these files are independent from the sampler module and they're formatted as XML, it means they can be easily shared between projects and edited in a text editor. We'll be exploring sample maps in more detail later in this series. The samples folder is where we keep the audio files that we want to load into the sampler within highs, and we can store them in subfolders to keep them organized. So for example, I have a trumpet subfolder here, and within that I have further subfolders to organize the samples by articulation. 
and then in these subfolders I have the actual WAV files. When we compress our samples using Heise's lossless compression, the resulting monolith files are also placed in this samples folder, and that's these files here with the .ch1 extension. These are the monolith files created from my WAV files. You should always keep your project samples in the project samples folder. Trying to load files from outside of this folder will cause problems when you come to run the project on another computer or when you deliver the plugin to an end user because the file paths of the other system won't match the system that you use to create the plugin. So this is the scripts folder and Heise encourages a very modular approach, allowing us to break our code into multiple smaller scripts that handle specific tasks rather than relying on one large script. And this folder is where the script files for our projects are stored. When we create a new project, Heise automatically generates the script processes folder. And in here, it has another folder with the name of our project. And in there, it has an interface script. And this is the script that's used to display the main interface of our project. So this file is created automatically. We don't need to set it up manually. The user presets folder is used for storing user presets. And these files capture the state of the interface controls and we can display the files in a preset browser. So if I go into this folder called factory and then into this folder called default, we can see I have two preset files. So these have the dot preset extension. When the user loads a preset from the preset browser or from some scripting that you've implemented, the interface controls are restored to the exact state they were in when the preset was saved. While presets only save and recall the state of controls, things like buttons and knobs and sliders, those controls can be scripted to trigger additional actions. This makes it possible through scripting to have a preset load a sample map or switch background images, for example. Despite the name, the XML preset backups folder is actually where our main project file is stored. The project XML is a human readable equivalent of the .hip file we looked at earlier. And this stores the structure of our project. So things like the module tree and which sample maps are currently loaded into which samplers. The GUI layout is stored separately in its own XML file within the UI data subfolder. Unlike the .hip files, it's best to keep just one XML per project. If you need to track different versions of your project, you should use a version control system like Git instead of creating multiple XML files. So stick to just one XML file per project and managing your project will be much easier. Saving the project XML won't save changes you've made to your script. To save script changes, you need to click the compile button in Heise's script editor or press F5. And we'll look at this in a later video. So if you make changes to a script, you save the project, you close highs, and then when you reopen highs, you find your changes haven't been restored. That probably means you forgot to hit the compile button before you closed highs. So that's all the folders that we find in our highs project. We do have a couple of additional files as well. So this one expansion info, this one project info, and this one user info. These are auto generated when we make changes in the settings panel in highs. This license file is one I've added and I recommend you add a license to all of your projects so that when you're sharing your project, it's clear to other people what the terms and conditions are regarding using your code and samples, etc. If you want more information about Heise project management and how projects are structured, I recommend checking out the Heise project management documentation. You'll find a link to it alongside this video. So that's an overview of the Heise project structure. Head over to the next video and I'll see you there.